Good day. You did it. We've got land. <laughs> we do. We got a free land. Free, uh, which, which ones are you talking about? Because there's so many, I just don't know where to start. Well, um, oh, I see that you took out a loan. I, I see that you... Yeah, I see that you took out a loan to, to buy that one dollar plot. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. Do you know that I can't see you or is that um, unintentional? Um, um sorry. That's great beadboard. Great Thank beadboard you. work. Thank you. That's an industry standard for a CD call home. Oh, let me take this nipple head out off my head. Are you All sleeping? Right. <laughs> Meditating. No, I'm working on a grant. So uh yeah, um, uh, one concern is the engineer. Uh, we got to address that. Uh, last time we, yeah. we talked, right? Uh, I talked. I called them. We're gonna put some pressure on them. On, we'll see what we can do. But that's got it. That's that's like, like holy cow! That's that's could be a disaster. So um, why why do you say that? Well. I haven't heard anything since about a week. Since I, um, it's more than a week, week and a half. And uh, we are six weeks now into that project. It was supposed to be done four weeks ago. And you, you paid, you're paying paid them down to do this, right? $2,000. Whole charge was going to be 4000 So I really need to put some pressure. Or, like, if it can't be done, I mean, we got to scuttle butt to, to some, uh, something else. Maybe there's, or maybe it's like not, not that difficult because possibly what we have already might even make it through codes. But the critical part was risk mitigation on having all the details specific and explicit in the package so that we don't get in, into any potential issues. Might not be an issue, yeah. but just want to yeah. risk mitigate. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the question is, is there another engineering firm that could do it better? And it's my guess is, at this point, no. And I would agree that it's a mandatory part of continuing. Because yeah. it's a necessary step, in, yeah. in my opinion. No, of course, of course, we're not getting any permits without that. <coughs> unless we get a lot in uh, Maysville, Missouri, <laughs> where there is no codes. Which right. is actually a possibility, and that, that would be like our last resort. Uh, so I mean, it's less of a it's less of a code thing though, and more of a like product liability thing. What do you mean? The the person buying the house is going to want to know that an engineer signed off on it. I think, uh, sure, but but I mean, the structure is quite robust. So anyone who has any knowledge about anything would see, oh man, this is this is legit. Yeah, but like if I put my tinfoil hat on, let's say that, um, like, even if it's a user caused accident, they like start an electrical fire by accident, and then there's an investigation, an accident mm -hmm. investigation. All that has all that has to come up is that the house was not approved, stands by an engineer for us to be liable for something. Yeah, but note that that argument does not apply in this, in, in, in this county, right? So it's there's counties that don't have that requirement, therefore not that liability. Okay, fair enough. But uh, the practice, yeah, I mean, yeah, this risk mitigation, but this is like, uh, you know, if, if trouble happens, you know, you're, you're in trouble no matter what. So I'm not sure how... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that okay. extra level of protection if that's actually a meaningful risk factor or not. I mean, because it's all yeah, about I, probabilities. Well, if you think like an engineer it is, but people are terrible at intuiting probabilities. Like for me, the bigger question is like, it's just a, well, what you're doing, what, what you're trying to accomplish is so radical that the, the, you want to be able to silence any sort of objection from the grounds of a regulatory stamp, like regulatory standpoint. Yeah, we want to be proactive, but we already are because we're already overbuilding on so much. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, we might not have this, but um, when you say your critique, which is valid, um, I still say it's okay. People are not able to judge risk. Correct. Now the, the question boils down to, uh, to me, it would be, is there a person that, like, like for example, you can't sell the house. 
well, what is that actual, per like to be ex uh, explicit or quantitative, how many people are not gonna buy that house? It might be like, because it's so attractive otherwise, you might lose out 1%, which might be insignificant, or maybe bigger. But my confidence in this, like just <clears throat> both uh, considering that people don't, aren't able to assess risk, we are so, so 10x ahead that yeah. that cancels that nullifies any uh, any uh, weakness. Now, that's uh, we're well, having this discussion. Yeah, we're having this discussion because we're just failing to <laughs> the engineers not really working with us as well as we thought they would. But hopefully, we I mean, I said, that yeah. in the next couple of days, like I'm gonna right. bother them until I get a clear answer here. Regarding Generally speaking, yeah. Well, I, I just I, I'll just add this: like if if the cost to get that stamp of approval is a headache with the engineer for another couple of weeks, I think it's worth it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all. Well, we got to we got to go through the headache. Now, the ultimate is in terms of bargaining is like, uh, you don't do it, you don't get paid. We're going to find someone else. Now that's a very risky thing. Now it's not impossible, <coughs> but it's a very risky right. thing. And right. how does it throw our <clears throat> program? Well, we can test the model on on zone land. It's close. It gets you. It doesn't get you inspection schedules. But you know, even in this first build, we're going to several builds where the inspection schedule becomes a, a lesser issue because what, as we wait for the inspector, we go to the other house. So actually, uh -huh. we're already mitigating that the the schedule issue already. So right. we, we actually would be quite good uh, in terms of. Model proof, which is the financial model proof, just by building and you know getting a couple of lots in, in the Maisel area or some other area where we can actually build. <clears throat> right. Um, now, uh, just knocking down this impossibility thing, uh, absolute absolute cutoff, I would say, would be <clears throat> November fifteenth. Absolute absolute, that's pushing it. Now that okay. takes, it takes us to four weeks. Uh, if we could make a nationwide search of somebody who collaborates with us, it's doable, but it would require somebody's time. I.e., a person who actually looks at, is capable one, capable of opening up our file, capable of us actually going in 3D walkthrough everything so I can point everything out, and everything is transparent. Right now, I think part of the issue is that I don't think the engineer is, is opening up our file. He gives it to the mm -hmm. draft person, and there's a chain of disconnect there. There's an inefficiency there. So yeah, it's I it's, could sense it's that. A, yeah, like are you an engineer or not? Is is it's the way like, I look at it. Really, it's like even there, the, this it's just I'm just laughing at all the inefficiencies of the process because every point of inefficiency is something that we pass that pass salt we solve and pass down the savings to the consumer, right? And pass down the increased value to OSC. So it's interesting. Yeah, I'm like, I'm ready. Just bring it on. Just bring all the troubles, because because every single trouble is that's worth X dollars when you solve it, and that's part of solving housing, believe it or not. You know, it's interesting. No, I agree. Um, I love the game. I love yeah. complex, unsolvable projects. I, I'm Why? surprised. I'm surprised. There's like Under no. Stress. I mean, maybe there is, but like, this is a great undergraduate civil engineering capstone project. Sure. Like, open open this CAD, do the force analysis. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, like, tell us if this is engineered properly. Um, yeah. That's my opinion. Oh yeah, like you know, I, it makes me think of the grant itself. It's like finding, like, if we work with UMKC, finding students that are taking us on this project. I mean, we we throw the dog a bone, like even funding well from from the grant right. to do things like that. That would be, um, right. Yeah, yeah. Did that? Um, so getting into the the meat of it, <clears throat> Brian and Jesse. Jesse did an amazing thing. So do you think that with Jesse, there's a we can actually get bite down into buying some of their time to produce the expertise on getting some of the education materials. What do you think, Brian? I don't know. We're going to have to go down there and... I tried to ask that I'd, I'd, in an email. I'm not sure. It really 
Depends. Because I, I don't know down, if Jesse's the right guy for that, but right. It boils down to finding individuals who who um, have the expertise and the time. So yeah, there's the facility. To do what? Say it again? To do what? Uh, work on the curriculum. So if we're doing, <clears throat> for example, we we uh, make a AR instructional on how to do the plumbing, the water system, you know, oh, yeah. water fittings. This is all in AR, you got your headgear. Okay, well, who's over there? Uh, do they have that expertise? Uh, is there a team that can support that whole process? So, I think there there is, um, but I don't I don't have enough information yet. I think right. we have to go there and like do some relationship building and all what's, that. What's the right question to ask for for Jesse? Because we can go down there. We've already been there. You know, we've seen the facility. It's awesome. What's missing is the staff that <laughs> that would help us and people we can pay <clears throat> with a grant, right? I mean, that's the way to think yeah. about it. Well, give him a call. Yeah. He's really reachable. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, and I think, so what are we asking? He's not a big... Go ahead. Well, um, that, that's why I think we should go there because, you know, it. you can ask for specific requests, but you can also ask for them to hear us out on what we're doing and then... I mean, there might be things that they're thinking about that we don't even know. But who, Jesse, or the people you know who brings I mean? to the table? Both. So the first thing would be to identify the people we could bring to the table. So maybe talk to Jesse about that. Because we've already met with Jesse on this, and, and everything is possible, and then it comes down to traction and execution. Right? So right. Jesse's open-minded. That's cool. Yeah. Ask him about the VR thing. I think that's a good ask. Mm-hmm. Like, can they support the VR, you know, the, the modules in VR? Yeah, what, VR. What do yes. they need? Can we write them into the budget? Yeah, so let me run this by you guys if you think this makes sense. So basically, we work a lot with CAD, and in my email I mentioned, well, let's make this process generalizable, right? So we have a, we start with full CAD files, like we have, say, for the house, or the tractor, or whatever, and there's work like to make it better and better too, like add more detail into it. But from that point, you import that into a VR environment and there's manipulability. Like, there's rules, you define rules for how things go together. And then people in VR with their gloves, like whatever whatever you do for the, the manipulation thing, you're actually man manipulating that in the 3D and putting together, uh, perhaps in a guided way or an unguided way, I mean, whichever way you're actually assembling that in, in VR. I mean, does that make yeah. sense? Is that useful? There, well, you might even consider AR instead where it's a layer on like this reality because it can guide people to like, okay, pick up that, you know, you, you yeah, have, yeah, that would be, the, you can actually build the thing, you know, and it yeah, would but, basically tell you the next step. Okay. But tell me what's, what's the main advantage of or disadvantage of AR and the main advantage of VR. Can you identify that? I mean, I think that there's um, in no. Okay. Well, VR is I mean, so I'm good. Not, Let me see if this makes sense because I'm trying to figure it out. Like, is there a tangible thing we can do? So, so the VR thing, the advantage is you're digital. You don't have BOM costs. With the AR, you still have to have the physical infrastructure, which is not as scalable. So if we're talking about going global, you're building a CEB home, building a you know building a house, building a brick press, a tractor. The way you can do it for cheap and scale it is VR, because you have you have everything digi digital. Not you're not paying five thousand dollars for the steel or thirty thousand for the lumber, or like even if it's right. But the advantage, the yeah, the advantage is you put somebody in AR and all of a sudden they're, you know, 90% in terms of the efficiency. Like you can take a green person, somebody who's just showing up and the AR will basically tell them what to do. So it's like drill this hole, you know, do this thing. And you just, it's almost like a game. And what I've seen, and I have 
I can send yeah. you a video yeah. of like a warehouse, right? So you're working in a warehouse. It, it basically says, go to this aisle, you go to this aisle, you know, go to this yeah. number, pick it up. And you have employees who, you know, on their first day, normally it would be like 20% the effectiveness. Now they're like hitting 95% because it's Goggles? that AR. They're walking around a warehouse. They're picking things up. They're yeah, scanning it. They're moving. They're doing the job. What's the device? So basically, that they it's use? like what's the hardware there? Are they looking on a tablet? Yeah, it's a, no. It's it's AR is you know um, glasses that have a virtual. Yeah. It's like it adds a virtual element to okay. what you see right now. Is that affordable right now? Um, what's the cost on that? It's affordable. I mean, it's just the same, about the same yeah. as VR. Yeah. Um, no, I and think... it's to me that's more for your workforce or the you know the actual yeah. doing. And then, yeah, I mean, you're not. To me, there's yeah. a, the other thing is you're building, you're you're messing with stuff, but it's it's all in this virtual environment. It's all conceptual, but the other one, you're actually you could yeah. have half a you could have a whole you could be building it, you know, and that to me is, you're no, actually, actually doing it. That's excellent. I mean, that's super tangible. So I go to Menards, I get you a bunch of these fittings or whatever. It's like this whole table of stuff you put on the glasses and it, and the AR, uh, does AR also allow identification of things? Yes. Right. So it'll tell you, yes. pick this thing up, move it there. Beautiful. That would It'll be major, major. So maybe just focus on AR, like like that. Um, I mean, we could. Yeah, let me show you this uh, quick yeah. thing. I mean, this this right here is a um, somebody. I don't really know them that well, but I'm aware of their project. Yeah. And uh, if I can share my screen, then I'll I'll show the video real quick because it just brings it to life of like this technology, and I think. Um, that whole thing, if we create that, that, so, okay. Yeah. So uh, add that to the file. Nice Wayfinder. Is that what you're talking about? It's this company called Versus, yeah. Is that KC or somewhere else? No, they're not KC. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly right. This is where, where we got to be doing, you know, and open sourcing all this kind of stuff. Making it accessible. AI assisted order picking. That's half the game if you can identify the materials. You're halfway there. That's that's one of the big things on the field. Like for novices, it's like um, it's a big one. No sound there? So this one is just on a phone? It's an app? Yeah, th this is different than the one I've seen before. I thought that... Yeah. I guess I uh, they've changed it, but uh, it was the glasses. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, well, that's... Uh, but let's, you know, what do we need to do around the application, if anything? Well... Um, okay, so that's to knock that one out. We have hope that we put something 
Jesse gave a good letter but of support. Now let's see if we can actually identify line line items that we can allocate to the creation of instructions. Or we can say in the proposal, okay, we're going to allocate this amount of resource to generating such AR or VR stuff. Yeah. But I think we need a... That's a big conversation, so we should go there and, you know, see if we can... Or we can do Zoom or call, you know, but we, we should... Well, that's, um, is, and Jesse knows a lot about that stuff. He did a lot of that stuff in the army. Like he was, okay. he was training people that way. What would you do right now? Like, uh, should we? Um, okay, let's talk about the next step with Jesse, because because I think we should really leverage that. That's a, that's a really great relationship. They've got the resources there. Um, call him, and then. And see where that goes, and then possibly meet. I'll call him. Um, I'll talk to him, and get this maybe like right after this call. I'll just talk to him and see if see what's next. Sounds good. Ask him. Okay, let's follow up on that. That that would be in terms of the rapid learning. That's right on. That's core. So we should. Okay, proposal. <coughs> I didn't do nothing. I didn't do much. I did the, I wrote the, oh, we got the letter um, of support from St. Joe. Ha, it's a deed. Look at the verbiage on it. <clears throat> In that whereas of the witnesseth. <laughs> yeah. I, do you think they're going to write a letter as well, though? No. I could ask again, but I asked already, and he didn't respond. Like okay. I, I mean, what I did with Jesse I is I drafted the letter for him, and he just filled in like two or three sentences. Well, holy cow! Uh, where where do we actually submit the grant? Uh, buried in your email should be an invite to the portal. Uh, you're both listed as collaborators. I have the login information for the total thing, so technically I'm the one who can submit. I can change that potentially. Um, is it the which portal is it? Uh, it is called the Emma Missouri DED, so I think it's Department of Economic Development, ARPA, Federal Initiatives. Um, can you paste the uh, it's a submittable. In, in the document, like, I was bothered by, like, where's question five of the narrative? Yeah, some of, some of the questions I skipped it putting in there because they're, like, um, uh, can you put a link to the actual application? Is that clearly visible, or that's what like, you gotta log in? No, no I, I can. Um, the only reason I didn't do it in here is because you should have received your login. But let me, I can also resend the yeah, invite in email right now. Yeah, that um, would be helpful. Paste, I'm... Uh, yeah, paste uh, questions, actual questions. So Marchin has logged in. The Brian Weinberg is pending. Um, Top of the dock, please, so that somebody, a third party, can actually get in there. And well, you, what I'm saying is you can't access the application unless you have the login, unless I create you the can't collaborator. The questions? Correct. Oh, OK. All right. So let's assume that, because I was trying to make sure that in, in these questions we're answering all the things in a clear way, because the application structures you to do say, to do things like 250 words for this, where I looked at the narrative and you already had it done, which I thought was pretty good. Um, well, well, so like I I rewrote that. Can we? Um, all right. So so you should have just received an additional email. Um, but you're you're unsubmittable. Yeah. Unsubmittable, correct. I mean, question three. I think you you answered in a generic way that's unique to us. I mean, this is a good overview. We, I mean, we can't unless we use way more than two hundred fifty words. That's perfect, you know. So. Well, well, you, you know, it's just like college up Every question is gonna. Have, be focused on a different aspects. So there's no there's no single area where it has to be comprehensive. Right. Right. Um, 
So, so the, the two questions that I was assigned, I've got drafts. I have to edit them to get them down to the word limit. Um, one thing, uh, and then just on letters of support, just to update you, Department of Labor's can't, it's a conflict. They can't write a letter of support for us. Mm -hmm. okay. um, for MCC, Courtney's not, with, like, the person I was talking to that's all excited about this is no longer working there, apparently. And she gave me two points of contact that I've reached out to, and they haven't responded yet. But I, I, I know them. I okay. can probably follow up with, it's the Dr. Alicia. No, the, so I reached out to her as well. She hasn't responded. Um, the bottom line, though, is for the purposes of, like, how we're describing the apprenticeship program, I don't need them to confirm to do anything. What we need MCC to do is give us a letter of support saying that they would provide the RTI for this apprenticeship. Okay. Well, uh, do you have Alicia's phone number? Or I, I, I should probably call her because I know her. Yeah, Dr. Dickens. Yeah, I like ran into her, you know, we've seen right. each other in person, so it's... For, for Jesse, though, he... I know you responded to his email. He asked if there's any changes that need to be made to the letter. Do you want him to make changes, or do you want him to just sign it and call it good? I thought it was good. Okay. Brian, brought up points, but I think for a bureaucrat looking at this, it made complete sense to me. Okay. And you're going to meet with him, potentially, so there's more there. Um, if there's tangible things that he can add, though, then right. I would just see, because right. that's what makes it meaningful. For the tangible, it would be okay. They look see. at... Yeah, we were talking you about. can add tangible things in there, then it, it's going to look like I did a big application like this, and what I learned was the more tangible, the better. Of course. You know, such that you're, it's not just like a blanket letter of support. Because I, I did that the first time around, and I gave everyone the template, and it didn't work. Right. So. I don't think we have anything more tangible with Jesse at this point, correct? But he, but he, you could but we're working pull something on it. together, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're working on it. All right. Um, do I need to sign up? Is that the problem with this? I, I think so. It should have been an invitation to sign up. Yeah. Martin, were you able to log in? Uh, yeah, I was before. I, I'm not trying right now. Okay. Leaving that. Oh yeah. But I, no, that's fine. But if you're if you're curious about like how come I didn't include question certain questions, you'll see it's like there's admin info. Yeah. Uh, it's not a continuous numbering system. If, if I look at the um, questions, the question I was asking myself are the questions that they're asking, in my view, like sufficient to make a case. So one, you wrote the overview, like okay, who are we going to serve? The second is tangible outcomes. Yes. Um. Budget narrative. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the questions are there. I was I was looking for missing questions, but since I saw missing, got it. Yeah, I was, I was like, is yeah, this yeah. Something else important? Yeah. So one one potential conflict in terms of question to question, I, I noticed is Brian and Martin. You talked about a six month apprenticeship. Yeah. And the home the home performance the work i've been doing with jeremy sheets at the department of labor is talking about the standard form is a two-year apprenticeship yeah so for the purposes of, of this application we can be aspirational and if it's a hybrid apprenticeship meaning we 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 uh assess progress through competency and time combined we have flexibility in there to make it less shorter than or longer than two years so we just need to make the language consistent so that one question, like Brian's answer to provide a short description of your proposed project um, describes a six month progression resulting in $50 an hour. I didn't read that and I went straight to the, t the standard two year apprenticeship model in which you start at an entry level wage of $20 per hour and end at $50 an hour. Now those two things are compatible if we write the language correctly, but I just basically I want to make sure that we're all three of us as we answer the questions are talking about the same project. Like we we understand the constraints of the Department of Labor apprenticeship, and we're we're re answering the questions accordingly. 
And that's something that I think I, can, I need to cover in detail where you guys, or you can just read my response to question 10 in section three. No, that's, that's correct. Uh, can you um, go back in there and make it consistent? Since you, you have a good overview of this. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Um, but the only, so that may be like closer to final edit phase. Um, yeah. We will I, definitely need to to integrate because I think, you know, like I said last week, you know, we all can write these things a different way. Right. Ex yeah, exactly. Um, Just one one number. Looking at, so, so the, the promise I was trying to make is that you start at, at the top rate and outlier pay in the industry. Now, for har carpenters, that happens to be 3280. So that's where you're like in the top 2%. Um, for a regular job, which is a, assuming you're working a whole year, so we want to change that. Now that doesn't that's not our cap. That's our starting pay after the training competency. Right. right. So so here here's here are your options. Um, I'm trying to meet the the people reviewing this where they are, and the easiest way to do that is to fully align it with the way the Department of Labor approves apprenticeships. And, yeah. and what that means is that you've got a your, your apprenticeship period, which in theory is two years, break that into even chunks, and each chunk is a different uh, wage. So the, you start out at 20 and you end at 50, let's say, hypothetically. The easiest way to communicate that is your baseline is every six months you get a, you get a raise up to your fully qualified amount. Um, and I just realized I have to change that to 25 because by regulation, the ending wage can't be greater than 50 or the starting wage can't be less than 50% of the fully qualified wage. So if you, if you want people to start at 3280, that is a journeyman level wage that most carpenter presses would only earn after they complete a carpentry apprenticeship. And that's fine if we want to do that. Um, but I'm, what I'm saying is we can, we can build a very rudimentary w wage schedule and then exceed it. Yeah. Yeah, you're on top of it. Uh, just the thing is, when I say just making sure you, you're reading my words right, which are you start at the top pay in the industry, when I say start, not when you enter the program, when you gain the competency. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Got it, okay. And I was saying that period, in my eyes, for me to train you on every single build aspect is six months right now. And that's not even assuming AR, VR stuff. This is what we got. Right. Right. Let's say it take, takes six months of full time training. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I need to go back and change that. Yeah. Other than that, um, <clears throat> What next? Um, I mean, does anybody have is anybody having issues or things we need to discuss as a group in terms of how to answer certain questions? Uh, yeah, John, remind me. So I, I'm assigned the just just clarity on. It seemed like you wrote the narrative for me. Was that or was it assigned to you? I think it was assigned to Brian and me. Brian. Okay. So well, well, which narrative? The budget narrative. Application question three, so we got that. So I'll just just clarity on where where I'm working. Expected income outcome. So question four, that's assigned to me, right? Uh, question. Four. So so question four of section five is assigned to Brian. Oh, it's Brian. Um. So well, well maybe yeah, I mean, the, so the last, when, when I was doling these out, it was really just my best guess. Yeah. So now's the time to change. Like, okay. you are on the hook for section five, question one.
Yeah. Okay. Um, you're on the hook for section five, question seven. And question eight. Can you explain what this short-term support thing is? Um, it would be like, I gotta think about this. Like, uh, I think, I think, I think I'm, I pulled that from, um, something in the guidelines where it talked about you could request funding for like transportation and child care. Like part of the grant could go towards that type of support for your trainees. For the trainees. Which which is benefici beneficiaries in the lingo of the Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm not sure why I copy and pasted. Yeah, so so Martin, your big your big section though is section seven, section six and section seven. There's multiple questions for each, but it, the section seven includes the budget narrative. Like that's the meat and potatoes for you. It's the bulk of the application actually, but that's where you actually say like here are the costs we want to cut. Like here's the here are all our recruiting and training costs that are a part of this grant. And, and, you know, here's the matching or in-kind yeah. money. So seven is the main main deal. Right. And six is also assigned. Right, so sec section nine. six is like... No. Well, a lot of these are yes or no. And a lot of these have to do with previous projects, so I figured you would have the most knowledge about that. Yeah. Six and seven. Okay. Okay. So six and seven is the... Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the recruitment activities? Like, how are we supposed to recruit for this? Before we've been doing it through our own channels, is there like do we have any insights on that beyond what we've been doing? Well, if I if I were requesting money, I would I would want to hire a media production team to film a recruiting video specifically for the apprenticeship. Um, I would want money to assist with like a web portal to support applications. Um, I would want money for to pay people to actually conduct outreach. So like people like Kyle Smith, who has that um, uh, return citizens program. Um, the lady that I I forgot her name off the top of my head, Mary Mary Esselman, who runs Ignite labs or ignition labs or whatever like people who who could run who could manage the third party recruiting regionally for the for st joe and kansas city um and like outlaws inc in theory for veterans that type of thing um I saw your note about like what activities I've done on the collaboration side and like that's pretty easy for me to answer. The biggest thing is getting Department of Labor approval and GI Bill approval. Like creating the apprenticeship for in in the Department of Labor system and then the VA system. Um, um, those are the big things. That's in the rec that's goes under the recruitment activities. No, no, no. Sorry, I switched gears. Did you add, you left a comment in there under like collaboration of, of how, what, could I list the collaborative activities I've done as a separate organization to support the creation of this project? Um, but yeah, 
simultaneously questions. simultaneously like recruiting veterans could be a a cost that you add down in the budget narr narrative specifically because it's a GI Bill eligible program. The only reason I didn't harp on the GI Bill aspect in any of my answers is because the intended beneficiaries are really specific as just unemployed or underemployed. Uh, so that there's a little conflict in narrative there. No, I mean I'm not saying you don't need to to mention it. I'm just saying that um, the focus, the emphasis has to yet before you get to veterans, before they even care about veterans, you have to answer the mail for the review committee on how are you positively impacting your beneficiary, your target beneficiary group, which primary for us is unemployed and secondary is underemployed. Where do you go to look at for those people? So they're like various employment agencies, like community service organizations, like St. Joe, they've got job training programs, like that would be the kind of outreach. That's the, when you say outreach, those are the types of orgs. Um, well, I think, I think the widest possible net is you don't, like you don't have to do a lot of in-person recruiting. I think I think organizations like Kyle Smith's and Mary Esselman's and other civic foundations in Missouri that are like workforce training development programs, like there's a handful of those that are worth focusing recruiting on, but like really your recruiting is you're gonna put this high production value information out on the internet and people are gonna share it. And you know, it, it'll you're relying on like a social media approach um, because like, and like, yeah, obviously you can post on job boards and go to the unemployment office and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. like whether or not those people are paying attention, you know, like I think it's harder to, to gauge, but everybody, right. you know, everybody's got a cell phone. And especially it's critical for like the first few apprenticeship classes that you, you're very selective about who you let in to maximize your chances of success and avoid the risk of dropouts, interpersonal conflicts, um, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Besides Kyle Smith, who was the lady you mentioned? Mary Esselman. There was an email thread earlier this week. Jesse put me in touch with her. She runs a like fab lab tech vocational training program for 14 to 18 year olds. Um, she, I shared your TED talk and summarized the project with her and she's really interested in meeting on Zoom yeah. with you and Brian. And I told her I'd schedule that after I talked to you guys. Yeah. Or at least propose some times. Uh, it's operationbreakthrough.org. Yeah. What do they do? Um, Ignition Labs is a part of Operation Breakthrough, which I think is just like a, it's a nonprofit in Kansas City, I believe, and they it's like community outreach, um, educational training, um, or education and training. Um, Operation or Ignition Labs is like Fab Lab, where they're focused on at-risk youth. It's kind of similar to Build Tribe. I haven't done too What's deep a dive on it, but that's KC as well. Uh, that looks like a makerspace that has turned into a vocational training program. Oh okay. yeah, that's the one that I introduced you to. Correct. Is that KC? Pretty sure. That's a good idea of a few things. We could go nuts on this. That's a, yeah. Could be a lot of team building there. Yeah, I, I mean, like, there's no, I don't think there's a reason. If you had, if you had an apprenticeship approved, you got the money, the funding, and you've got 10 clients waiting for houses to be built, there's no reason you couldn't go to one of these organizations and be like, I'm trying to fill a crew of 24 people. Who do you have? Who would be interested in doing this for two years? Um, I think you'd have some success there. 
Um, I should also let you know that um, I, I designed a job board for veterans that's currently being beta tested. So hopefully by the time you know we get into spring and the apprenticeship is live and everything, you'll actually be able to post directly to the veteran community before they leave the military. So while they're still transitioning service members. Show me a little link of that. Tell me more about that. I, I know you've been hiding something there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd love to show you a link, but it's actually a, um, the, de the developer took it down to make some bugs fixes. Okay. Um, but like it, it's it the the actual link isn't very impressive. It's just it, we're just beta testing the input fields from on the employer side only, but it's going to look like a type almost Instagram like interface for job searches. And the the difference is that you get centralized early access to service members up to twelve months before they leave the military, so they can like actually prepare to onboard to your job. Yeah. And there's a sponsor. Every service member who requests one has a sponsor who's assisting them in the transition, and then sponsor you know, from who? From from uh... volunteers, just some volunteers in the communities across the nation that um, are like, hey, you know, it's basically the work I was doing with Outlaws Incorporated of mentoring service members. And then the third thing that it makes it different is we don't privilege big employers, so every employer has equal real estate. And the employers compete on the merits of the job only. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, Buildtribe.com, okay. T R Y. -E. Right. Yeah. Right. It. I, I know it may be a little bit early for this, but one one way for you guys to um, one thing that would help me actually is if you read the answers I put in for question 10, section 3, and question 3, section 5. Because um, I, I, I kind of went a little haywire, probably. Um, I'm just curious, like, if I'm... I've never done this before. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Careful, you're being recorded. Is this one being recorded? <laughs> of course. I don't... I mean, open source, transparent, right? Like I. <laughs> no, uh, that's perfectly admissible behavior. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I, like, this is how I envision the project to be defined, and I don't know if that is accurate. I just want to make sure that I'm uh, but describing what, so it correctly. So, section three, population served where? I'm not seeing. Question, question 10, ten. Section three. And also, I structure this thing so you should be able to cr pull up the outline on the left hand of your screen and then just hi hyperlink to each question. You don't have to read it now, I'm just saying, like, as we move towards the edit phase. Um, so these are measures yeah 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 I should especially pay attention to that because the question assigned to me which is no that was Brian actually outcomes have to be very congruent right <laughs> with question time uh, so here's yeah there the, should be some well here's a uh, Here's the metrics. You're defining metrics. Well, your question on your outcomes better correlate highly with those metrics, right? They should, should be informed by the metrics you're using. So you're saying, I'm going to count this like this. Well, whatever you're saying you're going to do better be doing that. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of words to say we're just going to help people make more money and have better careers and learn important things <laughs> well yeah we're just going to change your lives in tangible and meaningful ways mm -hmm. material intangible such tangible material ways that's from my TED talk I like how your TED talk is so short it's so punchy 
you know? Yeah. It's efficient. It's efficient. Right. It's got efficiency in it. Just, Just like industrial productivity, productivity on a small scale. Core. I'm tired of how I keep quoting my TED talk everywhere. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're gonna go through the rigmarole of rehearsing that TED talk, which I'm sure you did a bunch of times, you might as well get some use out of it. Oh yeah, definitely. Between that and the Gladiator, I've got some quotes I always use. <laughs> the Gladiator? <laughs> yeah. Really? What's the one that you use from the Gladiator? Why are we here? Wait, you mean the Gladiator with Russell Crowe? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great movie. There's a lot. There's a lot of good quotes. It's, time, it's got a lot of timeless quotes. This, oh uh, yeah, this is not the marble of the Senate. This is the sand of the Colosseum. <laughs> that's Factory Farm. Yeah, what's the word is like, if you feel the sun on your back, don't worry, <laughs> for you are in Elysium and you're already dead. Yeah. Maybe maybe we should make all of our apprentices watch that together before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, well, so... <clears throat> I've been slacking on this application. I did reach out to Balaji to see what he says, and then a letter of support. I did something, but you guys did. John, you did. And you guys did it. I did my thing. Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm slacking. I was impressed. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, we're doing good, guys. Yeah, it's good. Good. Well, I mean, after so after nice. next week, after this week. We'll basically have like ten days to turn it around, to to polish it and submit. And don't forget. But like, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, and don't forget marching all the admin, like the SAM vendor input form and MOU yeah. and stuff. Don't forget yeah. all that admin stuff. Yeah. You can do that while you're on the toilet. Yeah. Okay. So. Anything else, or are we good for now? I mean, as long as everybody understands uh, what questions they're working on, and you can always connect through email for any issues that come up. Okay. Um, how are we doing in terms of completion at the moment? Like, have we basically completed everything? No, the budget narrative is not done. Um, I don't see answers for some of Marchant and stuff, like he said. Okay. Yeah. I, I would I, say, I mean, why don't you just ping us whenever you finished, and then we'll we'll uh, you know that will begin the consolidation integration. Uh, who are you talking to? Me. Yeah. So once the application, the budget narrative, and other things are finished, then we. we start putting it together? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah makes, makes sense. sense. All right. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you all. Yeah, if I don't hear from you by mid-next week, I'll force everybody to meet again, because I love meetings. Okay. John, John give, give us another, another quote from the video here. This. Um, Roman Victor. <laughs> What's the thing he says to the uh, the emperor at the end after he's like kills him while he's dying himself? And he's like, "I don't respect you." <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'll look it up. Oh, most importantly, is uh, right. we're we're potty training Tala. So Tala pooped in a potty. Everybody. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Sorry, have you ever Brian. been so happy that have you ever been have you ever been so happy that about poop? <laughs> no, I really haven't. Yeah. Sorry, I know you're on your way out. My bad. No worries. I'll see y'all later. Yeah, you too. Take care. Good job. Let us Bye. know what Jesse says, Marchin. Yeah.
I'll, I'll call him right, like, right. right now. Okay. All right, bye-bye.